play here. I'm back to start a new reading vlog. I'm starting this reading vlog on Saturday um, in hopes that I will actually get a lot of reading done this week. So we are in the tail end of work. I have two more weeks left of work. Next week is my last week, like fully teaching all of my classes. And then I have a final week, which will be interesting. I've never really done this before the way that we're teaching now. So that would be interesting. But at the start of May, I, or June, sorry, I'm like all, my months are all out of whack. I did a TBR game, and I realized that I have not really read any of the books on the TBR game, so I don't want to do a punishment role in the summer, so I'm going to make those books my priority. So here are the books that I have as a priority. I have to read Heartstopper Volume 2. I have to read Sweet Bitter Magic, Treasons of Thorns, We Can't Keep Meeting Like This. Reign of Shadows or Rivera, Not Our Summer, and Namesake. Um, so, the two books I'm going to start this weekend with, I really don't have anything to do this weekend. So, I'm going to start with Treason of Thorns by Laura A. Weymouth. This is my five-star prediction read. I really liked her first book. Um, it wasn't my favorite, but this book just has a little bit more of a creepy vibe. Um... She's, it's about this character named Violet. She was She's living in exile. Um, but the house is sort of like a little bit magical. So I really hope that I like it. I haven't. Um, I picked this up. The last time I was at BookCon, I picked this up. So this is a couple of years old. So this will be my priority book. I'm going to try to get this done before the weekend's over. And then my next one is a list book is We Can't Keep Meeting Like This by Rachel Lynn Solomon, which is definitely a light-hearted read. And because my Kindle doesn't always have the best battery life on it, the other two books I would love to tackle this week is Not Our Summer and Namesake. And I'm going to focus on those when I'm actually at work because my battery life won't be, like, that detrimental. But normally, like, if I, you know, my battery, I just, my Kindle doesn't have the best battery. Um, but I am going to go for a bike ride. I'm also listening to quite a bit. I just finished... Um, Keeper of the Lost Cities Unlocked, which did fit for a prompt. So I'm now I'm listening On the Way to the Wedding by Julia Quinn, which is the fi final Bridgerton book. I'm really, really liking that book. So I wanted to devote a little bit more time to it. But I'm going to take Treason of Thorns with me, go for a bike ride. Hopefully I don't get rained on. And I'll come home and I'll kind of update you on both books. I'm definitely going to sit outside today and read a little bit. I also want to scrapbook a little bit as well. Um, but that will be later in the evening. So I will update you guys when I come back. And I will give you updates on Treasons of Thorns. And also on um, my audiobook. Talk to you guys in a little bit. Bye. Gloria here. I'm back. I did one of going for a bike ride. And I made a little bit more progress on On the Way to the Wedding by Julia Quinn. Really liking that book. I like Gregory's point of view. It's been a while. It's been like a couple of books since we've had a male-led Bridgerton novel. Like the last one we had was... Um, Collins, Collins and Penelope's, and I really like the male leads in this because I just think it's really, really fascinating. I also really like Hermione as a character. I mean, I'm, sorry, Lucy as a character. It's very interesting, and there's a lot of family dynamics in this, especially with Anthony and um, Kate from book two. Their books, their season on the TV show is coming up next, um, but I really, really like it. But I want to do a quick update on A Treason of Thorns by Laura A. Weymouth. This is also the author that wrote A Light Between Worlds. But this book is, in, like, immediately off the bat, I'm already intrigued. So you follow this girl named Violet, and it's, the prologue is the magic system in this world is there is five mansions that um, are created. And these mansions, basically, they imbue the land with magic, I guess. Sort of how it was described. I've only read about 20 pages. I think that's what it is. But if you commit treason against the king that these houses are sort of protecting, you get, you get like, basically you cannot leave your house and the house will eventually kill you. Um, so Violet is basically put in exile. She has to leave her very, very best friend behind named Wynne. Um, and now the king is coming and asks her for a favor, I think. I've, I'm not up to that part yet, but... I love books about magical houses. I've always really liked that. Um, I really enjoyed um, the North series by Rick Riordan. That had a magic house. The um, the other book that I really like was the um, the Morgan Crow series. There's a magic house there. Also, House of Salt and Sorrow had a magic house. So yeah, or like a mysterious and mystical house. So I'm really excited to read this one. 
I'm only on page 20, but so far I'm really intrigued right off the bat. This would also make a great like Halloween read. But yeah, so I'm going to take a little bit of a reading break. I'm going to scrap scrapbook for a little bit. I'm going to choose a movie because I haven't watched a movie in so long. I was thinking of doing In the Heights, but maybe I'm going to watch In the Heights later. So I think I'm going to pick a movie to watch and to scrapbook for a little bit. And then I'm going to also read for the rest of the evening once I scrapbook. But I did want to do a number check-in. I got my YouTube queue down to 40 videos, which is pretty impressive because I was at like 150. And this is just videos from May. So June, I haven't even started. I haven't got through June yet, which is probably a lot once I actually get there. But I'm going to go scrapbook for a little bit. And then when I'm ready to read, I'll probably check in with you guys again. Bye, friends. I'm back. It is about 6.39. I did one up scrapbooking. And I watched a movie, the newest... I think it's the animated movie from Netflix. It's called The Wish Dragon. I really liked it. It was very, very cute. Definitely gave me Aladdin vibes. But you basically follow this young boy named Dim. And he, you see him at the very start of the movie as like a little kid. And he meets this girl and they become best friends. And then she winds up moving away and he stays in his small town. And then like so many years in the future you see him and he's, he has followed this girl. And she basically is like a very, very famous model. She's very, very well connected. Her dad's super rich and his whole goal is to touch base with her on her birthday and a dragon comes into play and he grants his, him three wishes and drama hilarity is so it was super cute. I watched it as I was crafting. I actually got through, I got to my favorite layout in my, in my album so far, my globe layout from the um, Shakespearean theater in London. So I was really happy about that. And then I ran out, ran out of adhesive, so I'm going to have to go get some more adhesive before next weekend in an ideal world. But I am going to pick up Trujan of Thorns and go back to my wrap-up videos that I've been watching. I am like about a month behind on everyone's booktube videos, so I'm going to go watch them, read this a bit. Um, I'm starting on page 20, so when I get to page 50, I'll give you guys an update. But so far, I'm intrigued to keep reading, and that's a really good sign. So I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Bye here i'm back it's 7 47 i did one up reading the first 50 pages in treason of thorns by laura a waymount this book has really captured me from page one i really am enjoying it i love eerie and creepy books I especially gravitates them towards this time of year from like now to like the fall i love eerie and creepy things i don't know why the summer i'm like that but i really am liking this so basically this book is set that her dad is basically a traitor i think i said this in the previous clip and she has basically been exiled until her dad dies. Her dad basically has been stuck inside his house. And his house is like magic. Um, and when you're a caretaker, you're given a key. And that allows you to like channel the magic. But since her dad was like considered a traitor, his key was taken away. And he used his own life, both life force to protect the house from basically destroying the countryside. Um, and now her dad has passed away, or they believe he has passed away, I suppose. And she has convinced the king to let her go back into the house and try to get it to a point where it's not going to be burned down. Because if these houses, their magic is a little bit off what it could, like, affect the whole kingdom, I guess. Like, that's sort of how it has been played. Um, but she has a friend that was left in the house with her dad, um... Laura, Laura A. Wimout does do a lot of, like, time jumps, so, like, you'll be in the present and then you'll jump into the past. I think it's handled a little bit better in this book than Life Between Worlds. Um, I do like the characters in this book a lot, and I just want to keep reading because I'm fascinated by the house. We saw the house once when it was in um, the beginning, and it reminds me of, like, sort of, like, a magical forest. Like, it's really cool. Like, also, it reminds me of, like, the house um, in the Percy Jacksons or in the Norse series by by Rick Riordan because those rooms were very like animated and had a lot of like elements that were like connected and very very um nature based so I can't wait to keep reading like I don't want to stop also YouTube cube update um I did I got I'm now only I only have 36 videos left which is major progress for me so I'm gonna read a little bit more and when I get up to page 100 I'll give you guys an update bye so here I am back it's about 7 30 in the morning i did wind up reading a little bit more last night of a treason of thorns i did get up to page about 90 i really am liking this book it's very eerie very very creepy there's a lot of stuff happening in this story 
basically V has been sent back to live at her parents' house called Burley. Um, and Burley is a magical house, but the magical house has a caretaker and she has not been given permission to become the caretaker and get the key. And once that happens, she can really control the magic and it allows the house to be in better shape, but also the land to be in better shape. So it's very much like a person house. Like it has feelings, it has thoughts, well not thoughts, but it has feelings and you can kind of see the after effects. But because her father is a traitor, because he wanted to free all these houses from the king's control, she has not been given permission to be a caretaker. She just has to go into the house and sort of make sure that it's in better shop so it doesn't get burned down. Um, and she has kind of crossed paths with her old friend Wen, and he is very much adamant that she not do that. She wants, she wants, he wants her to be safe and he doesn't want her to put her herself in danger. But she is leaning towards her dad's path in trying to free these houses, which I think is a very unique story. I don't think I've ever read something like that before. So I'm definitely intrigued. My goal is to finish the majority of this book today. But it is early, so I am going to do my nonfiction reading. I'm going to do my Skillshare class, which will be my first job. Um, and then I'm probably going to read a little bit before I go to bike riding because I'm going to go to yoga in the park. I love yoga in the park. It's like one of the highlights of my day. But I'm going to go do my Skillshare class or do a little bit of nonfiction reading. And I'll check in with you guys um, once I read. My goal is to get to page 100 before I leave for um, my bike ride. So we'll see if that happens. But I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Here I'm back. Sorry, let me turn off this light. <laughs> but I did wind up reading to about page 100 in Treason of Thorns by Laura A. Waymout. It's, it's, I just packed it because I'm going to go to yoga. But I really am liking that book quite a bit. It has so many eerie and creepy elements, but also like a restorative element, but also like one of my favorite tropes. Um, I'll, I'll tell you the trope at the very, very end of this reading vlog because I don't know if it's going to go that way. Um, but it has like an Anastasia vibe to me which is going to seem a little bit weird. I really like the main character a lot. I also love that there's elements of found family, but she's also been given a deadline. She has until the end of the summer to save this house before it's turned over to someone else and she loses her control. But it's even more tricky because she doesn't have the key that lets her channel the house's magic. I've never read a book like this before, but I am immediately intrigued right off the bat. Um, so I'm going to go to yoga. I'm going to take my audiobook with me. I'm in the middle of reading On the Way to the Wedding by Julia Quinn. But yeah, so I will update you guys when I come back from yoga. I'm probably just going to spend the whole day reading, um, which sounds like a perfect day to me. I'll probably, I might actually go to town at some point. I haven't actually been to the new, a, a pizza place opened up again and I haven't been there in a couple of months. So probably going to go do that, go get some pizza and just enjoy the beautiful summer day. Um, I'll update you guys when I come back and let you guys know if I read anything. I normally read like 50 pages when I'm sitting there waiting for my yoga class to start and then I do make quite a bit of listening progress and I'm left off on quite a cliffhanger with the audiobook I'm listening to so I'm gonna go do that and I'll update you when I come back home. Bye friends! I'm back. Sorry that took a little bit longer than I thought. I went to yoga. I um, went up to town. I got some dinner lunch. But I'm back. I did wind up making quite a bit of progress on well, not like a lot, but I'm, I'm, I'm up to page 138 in Treasons of Thorns by Laura A. Waymount. I really am liking this book. Their, their crew of people to sort of save these houses have sort of increased a little bit. And it's a callback to someone that she met very, very early in this book. Um, there's a lot of flashbacks to the past and it's just very eerie and creepy. I really do like the relationship that's developing between her and Wynn. I think that's super fun. It's great. I also have five, about five, about four hours, well, five hours left in my audiobook for On the Way to the Wedding by Julia Quinn. Really, I have four hours left because the last hour is like a longer epilogue that wasn't published with the book. Really, I'm liking that one. That's very, very fun. Sorry, I just got back from a walk and it's a little bit hot here. Um, I definitely think that Lucy is the most like me in like life. Like I would be a Lucy, like always want everyone to be happy yada 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 i just love gregory and his relationship with miss bridgerton she's been a constant in all of the books i wish we saw some of the other siblings a little bit more but that's what happens when you have like an eight book series and there's some characters you just never see but i'm really enjoying it so i'm going to go make some progress on my watching i still have about 29 videos left definitely can finish that today that is my major goal and read a little bit more of treasons of thorns so when i get up to page 150 i'll give you guys a quick update bye friends
color here in back. It's about 128. I did wind up getting up to page 162 in the Trees and Storms by Laura A. Waymount. Really liking this book quite a bit. Um, there has been a lot of, there's a lot more political stuff in this book that I was necessarily expecting, especially on um, like the king side of it. So basically, you know, the king of England is a big part of this story. But I also just really like the house elements and it's very eerie, very, very creepy, very, very magical in that sense but it's just a really really captivating read i also think that violet's character is really really fun because she is determined that she stay and protect this house even though you know the rule is that a caretaker has to put the house above everything else but the house put itself forward so everyone's really trying to convince her that and then she found an unexpected ally in a certain character i'm not going to give away who that is which i really like that character as well but it's a really, really rich story. A lot of it does take place in the house, but this is not a book that like only takes place in the house. You do see other characters and you do go elsewhere. I know I've heard some people say like those stories are a little bit boring to them, but I do like that the cast of characters keeps expanding. And I also really do enjoy um, the pacing of this. I will say it's a very, very slow start. So it's not like a fast paced adventure story. Um, I mean, there are adventure elements, but it's very much slow paced um very very eerie and very very creepy but it's definitely like a slow start and this is a standalone which i think standalones are so hard to find in young adult these days so i'm gonna keep reading my goal is to get up to page 200 and then i'll give you guys a quick update bye friends laura here sorry i got a little bit distracted i've been trying to start like post on tiktok for like a month i finally had to like re-register my account but my tiktok will be below i have no followers no views story of my life but you want some fun bookish content every once in a while especially because it's heading into summer and i probably will have a lot more time now that school's wrapping up check it out it'll be looked linked below it's very similar to my instagram name but i am pleased to report i did get to page 200 in a trees and of thorns really liking this book i heard someone say that there's a sequel to this book but i am unsure and i can't find that anywhere so if there is a sequel let me know but it's pretty sure that this one is a standalone as well but i really like it the relationship in this book is like has is very similar to like the AI relationship in like the Illuminate file series or almost like the obsessive relationship that was in Illuminate or not Illuminate Twilight that I sometimes struggled with but it's a house so I like that I also really like the relationship that's being built between her and Wynn and I just fear the end of this book because I feel like she's just going to isolate and isolate and isolate herself more and that's going to lead to a dangerous end point. But overall, I am really liking it. I'll give you guys an update when I get to page 250. Laura here. Sorry if you heard some background noise in that previous clip. It, we're having construction done, I feel like, on every single room of my house. So it's been a little bit chaotic. But it's about 4.12 and this is normally when I do my, my evening routine. I sort of organize everything, make sure I'm prepped for the week. I do my journaling, I do my organizing, I do all my lists and stuff that I have to do for the week. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm also going to continue listening to On the Way to the Wedding. I have to bring some stuff to school this week and all that other stuff and get sort of get prepared for that. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to go do that. It, doesn't, it normally takes me about like an hour. Sometimes I stretch at the very, very end of the day and I listen, I do like a quick stretching workout. But we don't always do that again. I'm trying to work on my morning and my evening routine before the summer comes. So I feel a little bit more consistent. But yeah, so I have to go do all that stuff. And then when I'm very done with all that stuff, I will give you guys an update about the rest of the week and what my plans are and all those other fun things. Um, but yeah, I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Bye. Here, I have changed my background a little bit. But I did want to say that I do want to getting up to page... 250 in A Treason of Thorns. I'm really enjoying this book quite a bit. Really unique. Um, it has a, sub, a couple of different elements, but I love the historical setting right off the bat. I also really like the eerie and creepy version of the house that we're getting. Super fun. I also really like Wen, Wen's and Violet's relationship. The story has gotten darker as the book has gone on, and that has really captivated me. Honestly, like I really, really like it. Um, I have about let me see. I have about, I have about like a hundred pages left. I don't know if I'm going to finish it tonight, but I do. I'm going to make a progress, but I am going to talk a little bit about like my reading plans for the week. Um, 
I said this in a couple of my other videos, but I've been kind of revamping my morning routine in the morning, like, and just trying to, like, get up a little bit more earlier and not as be frantic running out the door as I normally have. So I've been reading in the morning, and normally I read nonfiction, but I it did get approved to be on the blog tour of A Chorus Rises by Bethany C. Morrow, and this book is only like 214 pages so I think I'm gonna read this in the morning and try to read like 50 pages a day if I can get up enough early enough um this is the companion book to um a song below water I liked song below Laura I didn't love it this book follows the teen influence in Nima Barashar who we met in the first book so I'm really excited I'm actually on a blog tour for this so this one I have to read regardless but I figured I would read it in the morning and then if I get to like some point in the week where I want to finish it, I'll just stick it in my bag. Um, I'm probably going to be taking this with me, but I also have a couple of ebooks. I have Not Your Summer by Cassie Bazzi, which I've had for quite a while. I've also had Namesake by Adrian Rung, Young, which is in the like pirate themed um, fantasy novel. And another physical book I have is We Can't Keep Meeting Like This by Rachel Sin Lynn Solomon. I'm probably going to read Trees and Thorns, an ebook, and then we can't keep meeting like this just to sort of just swap up what I'm reading. Listening wise, um, I am, I'm probably going to finish or come very, very close to finishing On the Way to the Wedding by Julia Quinn. I have like three hours left of that. I will probably finish that tomorrow. And then my other two audiobooks that I wanted to finish for the month was um, When Justice Sleeps by Stacey Abrams and also the second... I keep on ca saying Cassidy Blake. It's not Cassidy Blake. It's the, the it's the it's the adult series. I think it's called Symphony of Bones, something like that. It's like it's like a cozy mystery supernatural series. And I got the audiobook for that. And that one's only like four hours. Um, so that's sort of my reading plans overall. So read this in the morning and see how far I can get. Um, but also try to tackle some more of my list books. I fell so far behind this season on reading my list books because they were they were they were like my room wasn't didn't get put together until like two weeks ago three weeks ago at this point so and literally all during the spring I had no bedroom so all of those books were not like available to me I couldn't access them so I most of those books are gonna gonna go over into the summer but I'm gonna plan my summer TBR this week so I have to get a move on these books but that is my plan. I am going to try to read another like 50 pages of A Treason of Thorns and give you guys a quick update and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. It's Laura here. I'm back. I did actually wind up reading to page 290 in A Treason of Thorns. I am devouring this book because I'm really curious to see how it ends. Like I'm really enjoying it. I um, it's very eerie, very, very creepy. This would be a great book to read during Halloween. Like, it really would. I, I, I'm i torn between four and five stars. I think I'll probably make my decision at the very, very end. I like that this book focused a lot on friendship and found family. I'm really intrigued. I'm going to definitely finish this book tonight. I don't think I could go to bed and not finish it. But I also plan on watching In the Heights tonight because I've heard so many good things about it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna go have a snack, take a shower probably, and then I'm probably gonna tackle the rest of A Trees and Thorns and probably listen to a little bit of, um, On the Way to the Wedding, because I want to be able to make some progress and be done with that tomorrow. That's my plan. So I'm gonna go do that, and when I'm done with Trees and Thorns, I'll give you guys a check-in. Bye, friends. Hello, you're here. I'm back. I did want to finish A Trees and Thorns by Laura A. Waymount. This was a book that I chose for my five-star prediction reads. I have to admit, I really, really love this book. I think I love this book even more than A Light Between Worlds, which I really enjoyed. This book really shocked me. I think this would make a really good, like, well, not really shocked me because I thought I would like it, but I went in sort of blind. I really didn't know what I was expecting, but I love the romance in this book. It was definitely not the focus of this read, um, but I love the found family elements. I love the airy and creepy elements. I gave this book five stars I really really enjoyed it I have heard no one talk about it so I'm gonna hype it up a little bit more but I really enjoyed this book I love the historical setting I love the characters I love the magic system it was really really fun so I'm not gonna read anything else tonight I'm actually going to go watch in the heights um, which I've been waiting to do but tomorrow I am gonna start not that summer by Cassie Bazzi um, and I will update you guys about that and also um, 
The Chorus Rises by Bethany C. Morrow will be my reads for tomorrow. But I'm going to go start um, In the Heights, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. It's Lori here. I'm back. I just wanted to do a quick update. Today was a bit of a weird day. <laughs> um, I went to work like normal, and we had no internet, <laughs> which is normally fine. However, I teach on Monday all my remote classes, so... I had no way to teach my classes, like, at all. However, the good news is I did start this morning, um, Not Our Summer by Kathy Bazzi, and I wound up finishing it, like, relatively easily. So that was actually a re it wasn't what I was expecting, I'll say that. Um, it basically focuses on these two girls, you get both their point of views, their cousins, um, their grandpa has recently passed away, and their moms have had a falling out like before they were even born basically so they've they've seen each other a few times but nothing close their moms really don't like each other they really don't like each other and their grandpa sort of forces them to go on this trip and if they he if he, they do all five things then um they get like an inheritance that they could use towards college they get the inheritance and their mom also gets the inheritance i thought the travel stuff was so fun I come from a massive family. I'm one of, like, 25 grandkids, so I get those cousin dynamics so well. There was just... I wasn't that invested in the romance on either side. There was, like, two romances that sort of developed, and I didn't really love either of them. And this is just maybe, like, a me thing, but there was a lot of, like, smoking in this book, and I know it happens. I understand. That just really was just not... <laughs> what I was expecting like she you know it was but it was a fun read I enjoyed it I really liked I mean I liked it I didn't love it but I enjoyed it we'll definitely check out more about this author in this feature it was set in I think it was set in Arkansas um I don't think I've ever read a book set in Arkansas I like the cousin dynamics I think I liked Becca's point of view a little bit more um, but I like the traveling elements it was really really fun I call I texted one of my cousins and I was like oh my god if we did this we would it would be amazing to just sort of go around the country. And they went to, like, Georgia. They went to the Grand Canyon. They went to another place, and then they went to the Florida Keys, which I thought was really, really fun. I also finished listening to On the Way to the Wedding, which is the Julia Quinn book. That book, towards the end, I adored. I really liked it. It went in a direction I was not expecting, but I loved it. I would wind up giving it, like, five stars for review. I'm so upset that I have finished the Bridgerton series. Like, I don't think my, I, my my emotions are totally ready. But the one thing I really did like was the epilogue. Like, they, they have a second epilogue for all the books. You get the audiobooks. You can just listen to directly after the regular epilogue. I love that epilogue. I was so invested in that epilogue, I, like, had to know what happened. So, I am not sure what I'm going to do next. I do have to, I did start reading Namesake by Adrian Young, but my Kindle's charging. Um, so, I'm going to go work out and see if I can get that to charge, and then I might just keep reading main, Namesake, or I might read You Can't Keep Meeting Like This by Rachel and Solomon. So, one of these will get read. Either way, this one is definitely going to come to school with me tomorrow because... I have another day like today I'm gonna have a lot of reading time so fingers crossed that I don't um but yeah my goal also for tonight is to finish watching in the heights and also finish up my youtube queue because I'm so close to being done I have like a couple of videos but I'm gonna go work out listen to a much older episode of fandom buzz with Alexa and Mackie and I'll update you guys when I can Thanks. Larry here I'm back um I did wind up reading to chapter four in namesake on the train ride home um, because my Kindle died, so I was reading it on my phone. But this is the sequel to Fable. Fable left off at sort of like an interesting spot. She's sort of... I'm going to spoil the end of, Ma of Fable for you. But something happens at the end of Fable, so she has changed her environment, her, where the character is, and now she's with people that she wasn't with for the first half of the book, or the first half of, in that first book. But basically, it's sort of like a scavenger. It has like piratey vibes. They're not actually pirates. Um, but many, many years ago, her dad sort of left her on this island and told her, if you can get back to me, I will give you your inheritance. Um, and she kind of is trying to get back to him, but then some secrets are revealed 
and she comes she becomes really invested in this crew and now she's separated from this crew um and now in this next book she's sort of with the enemy i guess you could say um and a person from her past has made an appearance so i'm gonna read this i have let me see how many youtube videos do i have down i have like i have like 10 left some of them are super long, so I'm going to try to make my progress and watch as many as I can. I also think I'm definitely going to be splitting this reading vlog into two parts this week because I did a lot of filming yesterday, and I'm already at almost 30 minutes, so I'll probably split this in the middle of the week. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go get some reading done um, and read until my Kindle dies, and then I'll probably pick up You Can't Keep Me Like This because my battery on this Kindle sucks, but that's where all of my ARCs are, so... I'm going to go read, watch um, some bookish realm videos, and I'll update you guys when I read maybe to chapter, like, 8. I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Slurry here, I'm back. And I went up getting up to chapter 9 in Namesake. This book is very different from book 1, if I'm remembering right. It's been a bit since I read that book. Um, this book has really changed quite dramatically because Fable's in such a different location. She's on the enemy ship in this book. Um... She's forced to work with her enemies back in the past. There's a lot of elements in the story, and she also has found someone that she considered to be a father figure to her who has suddenly gone to the enemy. So she's in a very, very precarious situation, and she has a lot of enemies on this ship, some known and some unknown, um, but she might have someone that's not an enemy as well as someone that's helping her. But I really am liking it. It's quite a fast-paced read. My goal... I don't have page numbers in this. I'm on about 18%. I'm going to try to get to like, I'm going to read a couple more chapters. I do want to watch In the Heights tonight and that's like two and a half hours. So I need to give myself some time. But I also tomorrow I am hopefully going to start When Justice Sleeps by Stacey Abrams. And if I can complete that audiobook and my other one, um, I can never remember the title of it. Um, I will have finished all my audiobooks for the month, which I don't think has ever happened. So I would be really excited. So I'm going to go read a couple more chapters of Namesake and then I'll give you guys another check-in and I'll just be with you guys in a little bit. Bye. This is Lori here. So I'm actually here to wrap up this reading vlog because today at work, I also had another day where I had no internet, which means I couldn't teach like four of my five classes. So I did get a lot of reading done and this reading vlog went a lot longer than I thought it was going to go very, very quickly just because I had so many clips for Sunday. Um, which I normally don't have. So I'm going to wrap up this reading vlog. But I did just want to finishing Namesake by Adrian Young. I really enjoyed that book. I think I preferred, well, the first half of that story was very, very isolated. It was not like the first book, which was very, very team focused. And, the, you know, the team was sort of coming together and they were forced to work together. So we got that in like the second half of the book, which I really enjoyed a lot more. A lot of the characters sort of came into play. This, I would say, is not a fantastical series, but there is some like magic traits, I guess. Like there's like a, there's like a, um, she's like, um, she can like work with gems. So it's not really magic, but it's more like, um, sort of like being like a blacksmith. I read Blade of Secrets recently. But I like the second half a lot more than the first half of the story. I read it pretty quickly, um, considering I just literally just sat and didn't do a whole lot. Like, I just was reading pretty much the whole day. Um, I also wound up catching up on Fandom Buzz, What Alexa, Mackie, and Kristen from Merrily Kristen. They put out an episode a couple of weeks ago about um, wrapping up the Keeper of the Lost City series. I just finished that, so I really like that one as well. I would give that book, like... 4.3 stars. I really did enjoy it. Like, I liked it. I wish the first half would have included some of my favorite characters, but I really like the elements. It was not a heavy fantasy book. Um, it didn't really have any fantastical elements, but it was super engaging, super fast-paced, and I definitely liked this series from her a lot more than her Sky in the Deep book, which I read a couple of years ago at this point. Um, so I did wind up finishing that and wound up giving that 4.3 stars. The first book I finished in this reading vlog was Treason of Thorns by Laura A. Waymount, which I really liked. I gave it five stars. This was one of my five star read prediction books that I really liked. It was like a mag it was like a historical fiction magic novel. Really, really liked this. I actually have to bring this to work to give it to a coworker. 
before we leave for the summer. Um, and then I also finished Not My, Not Our Summer by, Ka by, by Cassie Bozzi. I wound up giving that one three stars. I liked it. It was fun. It had to do with cousins. Um, there was a lot of, like, traveling in it. Um, it wasn't my favorite. I thought the romance didn't capture me, but I really like the focus on cousins. And I like that we both got both characters, like, both cousins point of views it was enjoyable so i'm gonna go wrap up this reading vlog and then i'm gonna go start my next reading vlog which will hopefully take me till sunday and i'll talk to you guys soon bye let me know in the comments what have you been reading and make sure you guys go follow me on tiktok i'm gonna put my handle in the description box um i've been wanting to do it for a while and i just never got around to making an account but go follow my tiktok it will be linked below and i'll talk to you guys soon bye friends